serious incident at a high school in Waikato earlier this month has reignited the issue of schoolyard bullying. A 14-year-old spent six days in hospital after getting hit by a group of other children. So as parents, how can we help? In Coffee Group today, we welcome back John Cowan from The Parenting Place and from the in-school anti-bullying program, Kiva, a very warm welcome to Jeremy Bloomfield from Accent Learning at Victoria University. Firstly, Jeremy, tell me about the program that you run. It's a whole school approach to reducing bullying, um, aiming to work in partnership with parents, uh, with teachers, with mm -hmm. students, so that everybody has a clear understanding of actually what is bullying to start off with. Um, and going from that, looking at specific attitudes and strategies of what to do if bullying emerges, but also building empathy and things like that so that bullying isn't going to happen in the right. first place. Okay. So John, so kids are typically quite tight-lipped about this sort of thing, aren't they? They are getting bullied. What are the signs that we should be looking out for that there is an issue going on? Sometimes it's hard to spot because mm. kids have all sorts of moods, but if children start to show a reluctance to go to school, to uh, uh, travel on a bus, they want to walk to school instead of going on the bus, if they are starting to have somatic problems, you know, sometimes they get tummy aches and sick, sometimes their schoolwork, anxiety, all sorts of things. And so uh, perhaps the best thing you can do is to have a regular little chat at night. Mm. And if you have that in place, then sometimes these things will surface. And the most important thing to realise is that your kids are probably wrestling with shame and fear. Because one of the awful things about bullying is you tend to agree with the bully. If, you, you, if the bully's told you you're a loser or you're scum, the kids tend to believe it, so they're ashamed to let their parents know, and they're also fearful that the parents are going to do something dumb and make the bullying worse. Right. And so be gentle and, and take it seriously. So, Jeremy, obviously bullying has a much wider impact than just their school mm, life, sure. doesn't it, for the children? Mm. What, how else does it affect them? Well, uh, as John has said, you know, the liking for school is going to be reduced anxiety. Um, children will have less trust in their peers. Um, and one of the big things about Kiva is it really does work on the peer group. Mm. That's one thing which sets it out. So we're looking at changing the norm of the group. So if there was any particular incident of bullying, it wouldn't just be you and me. There'd be other people around. Mm. And so it's, what are those other people doing? Are they allowing it to happen? And so changing that so that bullying is seen as something which everybody can do something about. Mm. I'll just give you a little story if we've got time. Um, a parent uh, recently at a school that's been doing Kiva was at the school gate, three o'clock, kids streaming out from, from school, and she noticed a child who was picking on another one. Before she could actually step in and, and say anything to this child, three girls stepped up mm. and they said, hey, that's bullying, cut mm. it out, we don't do that here. Mm. And that's exactly the sort of norm we want to have happen, mm. because otherwise the children, as you say, they won't like coming to school. Um, in New Zealand, we have had extreme cases where children have committed suicide mm. as a result of bullying. And that's if the, the worst case scenario that we want, isn't it? If the peer group is looking after them, it's mm. much less likely to so, happen. So obviously we want it to be mm. so people think that bullying is the abnormal thing to be doing. So what should we suspect, actually, John? What if you think that your child is being the bully? What should you do then, or what conversation should you have? Well, it's desperately embarrassing, but accept the reality that it could happen. And also the reality that sometimes bullies are the victims of bullying as well, and they now seeing it as being a normal thing in that culture, so they bully less powerful kids. Mm. One of the things which is unhelpful is to label the child a bully. Label the behaviour and say that that's really unacceptable. But as you're doing it, let them know that you're actually believing that they can change, that, they, that they're a good kid, and that they can find better ways of being able to cope with these things they're trying to cope with at school. Mm. Okay. And the punishment never works. Although we're tempted to want to take revenge, punishment yeah. doesn't work. Yeah. So the children need to be held accountable. accountable. Bullying is not acceptable. Mm. What are you going to do to make things better? Yes. And the thing is that if we don't get in early, children can grow up to be adult mm. bullies. And bullies mm. as well. So okay. the work at this, at this level yeah. is really, really important. Right. Okay, so nip it in the bud. Well, it's been enlightening, both of you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, as always, great advice, John and Jeremy. And if you'd like more information on the Kiva Anti-Bullying Programme, go to the website.